In this video, I'm going to show you how to do this really awesome photo effect. So let's get into it. So this specific effect has been made popular by a few specific music videos, but the one that comes to mind is a more massive video. Now the effect is essentially the camera joltering around a subject. It almost looks like a GIF. So we're going to recreate that effect in today's video. So first up, you need a digital SLR camera. And then once you've turned your camera on, you need to set all of your settings into manual mode. If you've got automatic modes here, then just disable them, put all of your settings to manual, and you want to go ahead and find a subject. Now, this effect is most typically done with people, but because I'm filming these videos today, I don't really have anybody that I can have to step in, so I'm just going to use just a small audio recording device just as a stand-in. So in order to do this effect, you first want to turn your camera on. You want to load up the viewfinder, and you want to set your focus on your subject. Now, essentially, you just want to take three photos and every time you take a photo, you want to keep at the same height and you want to keep locked onto a specific point. So use the center of the frame as a marker and mark that on a specific point of the frame. So if you're looking at this, for example, I'm going to put this at the very top. So I'm going to frame up this specific point here and every photo should be framed with this in the same point. This is really important. Set all of your camera settings in, focus up, and then we'll go three, two, one. There's three photos and you should be able to see those on screen now. Three very simple photos. And as you can see, these are in manual mode. So no light is changing. So once you've got your photos, you now want to go ahead and put these into the computer. So we'll take the SD card. We'll take the SD card adapter and we'll just drop these into Adobe Lightroom. So once you're inside of Adobe Lightroom, you first want to begin by navigating to your files. So we've got these three photos here. We're just going to import all of those into Lightroom. Now we'll go to that first photo. We'll go into the develop tab. And inside of the develop tab, you can make all of your changes here. So we'll begin by increasing the exposure. Then we'll add a little bit of contrast. We'll pull the highlights down, increase the shadows a touch, pull the whites up. We'll add some clarity onto this. Of course, if you're dealing with models and you've got a person in the photo, I wouldn't recommend adding too much clarity because it's quite unflattering. But if you're just doing a product shoot, then it's fine. We'll increase the vibrance and I'm actually going to change the white balance a little bit. So I'm going to pull the temperature to be a little bit warmer and that should do. We'll go into library select everything. So we'll select all of the layers, go down to the right, select sync settings and synchronize. So now we've got three photos color corrected the exact same way. So we'll select all of those, press export, and we're going to create a folder on our desktop and export them to the desktop. So that's just going to take a moment to export. And once that has finished exporting, we can go over into Adobe Premiere Pro. We'll navigate to that folder on our timeline and these photos are here. So we'll drag those three photos into Premiere and then we'll drop them onto our timeline. Now, as you can see, because I was shooting on a digital SLR, obviously the frame is much larger than a 1080p composition. So we need to select the first one and we'll pull the scale down to around 34% and then we'll just pull the position of this upper touch. Copy that motion and then we're just going to paste that onto the other two photos. So we've got our three photos here. Now, as you can see, when I've imported the images, each image is around four, five seconds long. So if I just play it back, nothing really happens after five seconds. It flicks into another one. And then after another five seconds, it flicks into another one. So we need to decrease the duration. Now, this is completely up to you, but I found that four frames for a photo is good enough for this effect. So we'll go one, two, three, four frames to the right. Press C on the keyboard, cut and delete the second part. Now we'll bring that second image over. We'll go one, two, three, four. Cut, delete the second part of that. We'll bring the last one over. One, two, three, four. Cut and delete. So now when we play this back, we get this effect. Of course, though, it is not creating this looping effect. So in order to create that looping effect, we're just going to copy the second image in that sequence, Command C. We'll move over, paste that in, and we'll drag that to the end. So we've got one, two, three, two. 
So if we just loop this, it's going to go one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, and create this looping effect. So we'll just copy that, copy all of those, move to the very end point of that last one, and we're just going to paste this in, let's say 10 times. And then when we play this back, you can see we've got this really awesome GIF effect happening. And that is the basics of how you do this GIF photo effect. Now, a few things to point out before you go ahead and shoot all of these photos. First of all, it's really important that you don't leave a massive gap between your photos. You only want to move a little bit in order for this effect to work. If you move too much, then the transition from one frame to another frame is going to be completely jarring and it just won't work. So keep the movement very subtle, only step a little bit to the right or to the left. And then of course, like I mentioned earlier, it's also really important that you set all of your settings on your camera to manual rather than automatic because if you have an automatic setting, let's say every third photo is a little bit brighter. So if I set this to automatic and the exposure on this photo was brighter, it means that once you add this in into the sequence and you've got this brighter photo appearing in the sequence, we're going to get this flashing effect happening and that is going to completely ruin the effect. So you want to make sure that your settings are set to manual and none of the settings are changing throughout these three photos. This applies to your ISO, aperture, white balance, all of your settings, make sure they're set to the exact same number on all of the photos. And then of course, tip number three is to frame up on a specific point. So if you're looking through the viewfinder, aim at a specific point. Now, if for some reason your photos aren't lining up to the exact same spot, as you can see in my example, these are just a little bit off. It's completely fine. All you have to do is just add some sort of reference so you can add a cross onto wherever. Let's pull this cross up to the top so we know what we're framing up. So we'll put this up to the very top center. So this first photo is perfect. The second photo is a little bit too low. So we'll pull that up a touch and we'll pull that to the right just a bit. And then we'll do the same with the third one. We'll pull that to the right and then we'll pull that down. Now when we play these back, these are much closer together. So we can copy that second frame again and put that at the end. And then we can just do this process again. And then when we play this back, that should look a lot smoother. Now my last tip applies to editing and that is once you have successfully completed the effect, I would recommend making this longer than you need it. So copy everything and make this maybe 20 seconds long, select everything right click, nest, press OK, and now that has been turned into one long video. This means you can add keyframe animation into this, or you can select just a small part of the video that you need to use. And the great thing is by nesting everything, it also makes things a lot easier when you're in the edit and you're working with other files because this is treated as one video rather than a bunch of still images. And there you go. That is how you create this looping GIF photo effect right inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and Lightroom. Of course, Lightroom and Premiere aren't essential to this. The techniques are very simple and very basic. So you can recreate this effect in any other editing software. But there you go. Thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.